my name is Chris Eccles and I'm the Chief Engagement Officer here at Blank Park Zoo. And I want to welcome you to Hope for the Wild Corals. I'm so excited you're here joining us on our journey to learn more about corals. Did you know corals are known as a rainforest of the sea, covering less than 1% of the ocean, but are home to almost 25% of all known marine species. Coral reefs are among the most biodiverse ecosystems on the planet. There are often more types of fish living in a two acre area of healthy coral than there are species of birds in all of North America. These fascinating animals are essential to the health of our oceans. They provide habitat, clean water, food, and stabilize the seabed, helping seagrass, seaweed, and other marine plants to survive. Unfortunately, corals are also in danger. It's estimated around 60% of the world's coral reefs are currently threatened by human activity. Blank Park Zoo is proud to be a part of the solution and live our mission to inspire an appreciation of the natural world through conservation, education, research, and recreation. As a member of the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, we work collectively to save animals in the wild from extinction. During this program, you will have the opportunity to hear from a variety of speakers who will highlight the coordinated work being done by staff from Blank Park Zoo, the Mississippi River Museum and Aquarium, and the Florida Reef Track Project to save the corals. You will also get to meet some of our favorite aquatic animals, like these guys, along the way and see how our staff take care of the little piece of ocean here in the middle of Iowa. The work to save corals takes time, patience, and funds. At Blank Park Zoo, we believe that everyone will make a difference every time you visit or take part in our programs. A portion of every dollar spent goes to saving animals in the wild. During the program, you will have the opportunity to hear from staff and volunteers on ways you can show your support and take action. Be sure to visit our BidPal page to browse, bid, or buy on a variety of items, including some unique behind the scene tours. Auction items are open now through March 8th. We hope you enjoy the program, feel inspired to learn, take action, and have hope for the wild. The Association of Zoos and Aquariums, is also known as AZA, has launched a conservation project to save corals in the wild. The Florida Reef Track Rescue Project is a member-driven rescue effort targeted to end habitat loss along with Florida Reef Track. Since 2019, 15 AZA facilities have heard the call and have created nurseries for corals collected from the unaffected zone. There are two goals for this project, the first being to prevent localized extinction along the Florida Reef Track for the most vulnerable species. The second part is to maintain as much genetic diversity as possible for over 20 priority species in preparation for restoration and possible future habitat disturbances. The rescue project is working with federal and state agencies in Florida to save some of the remaining healthy corals along the Florida Reef Track. Over a thousand corals have been placed in AZA accredited organizations and more are to be placed in the next coming months. Land-based facilities called nurseries are housing and aquarium biologists are caring for corals removed from the Florida Reef Track, while researchers have the time to try to better understand this disease and how it impacts the reef and how future outbreaks can be managed. Facilities are being developed for coral holding all across the country. The Florida Reef Tract is North America's largest living coral barrier reef. It's the third largest in the world. It stretches over 360 miles along the coast of Southern Florida into the Caribbean. These reefs are estimated to be between 5,000 and 7,000 years old after the sea levels rose following the Wisconsin glacial episode. This stretch of reef is home to 45 species of stony corals and over 500 species of fish. Seven of those stony coral species are actually listed under the Endangered Species Act. This reef helps protect not only the wildlife that inhibit it, but it also protects the coastline from storms and erosion. In 2014, scientists identified an outbreak called stony coral tissue loss disease. Since then, we have seen an estimated 90% reduction in these corals that are the building blocks for this ecosystem. Once stony coral tissue loss disease is observed in a coral, they generally do not survive. Scientists are working hard to find the solution to this problem. Stony coral tissue loss disease is caused by an unknown pathogen. The corals have been observed with large portions of their tissue receding or completely gone. Once a coral loses its tissue, it cannot survive. 
This is different from coral bleaching. You may be familiar with that term. This means that a coral still has tissue, but the coloration has become pale or even white when the coral is actually dispelling its symbionts. This process is often the result of rising ocean temperatures. Unlike stony coral tissue loss, coral bleaching can be reversed when corals pick up their new symbionts. You might be wondering, what is even a coral? Corals are living animals. It's a marine invertebrate from the phylum Cnidarium. Other animals in this group are also sea anemones and jellyfish. These stone, stony corals have calcified skeletons underneath a thin layer of tissue. Each coral is made up a number of polyps. As you meet some of our corals later, you'll see what I mean. These polyps are how the coral takes in nutrients. At night, coral polyps come out of their skeletons to feed on zooplankton. They stretch out their long stinging tentacles and capture critters that are floating by. Corals also have symbiotic relationships with zoans and thelia. These symbionts use photosynthesis that bring in energy, give the coral oxygen, and also removes waste. I'm the Association of Zoos and Aquariums Florida Reef Track Rescue Project Coordinator. And in that role, I help maintain communications and the network of institutions across the country taking care of Florida rescue corals. I also am the main liaison for all of those facilities to the larger stony coral tissue loss disease response effort. The project officially started on November 1st, 2018, and that was my first day as coordinator. This is the largest collaborative coral conservation effort that AZA has ever been a part of. In just two years, 19 facilities in 14 states have worked together to rescue 2,000 corals. This project is an example of what working together with a good plan and a clear focus, this is what that can do. And we hope that this project can be an example for other conservation efforts around the nation as well as globally. Ultimately, my personal goal is to see the offspring of the corals that we've rescued outplanted back onto a healthy reef. Ever since I was eight years old, I wanted to be a marine biologist, a, a person who championed the ocean. And this project is allowing me to do that. And the fact that this rescue is taking place in our own backyard, in one of our national natural treasures, it makes it even more important to me. Every time I see rainwater run into a storm drain, I know that that water is eventually going to end up in the ocean. Whether you live in Iowa or a coastal town, what you do in your yard, your neighborhood, your community, it all runs downhill. That journey of water from the heartland to our coast connects us all to the ocean. And that's why it's so important that facilities like Blank Park Zoo are helping to rescue Florida corals. What happens here in Iowa affects what happens in the ocean. That journey of water connects us all to the ocean and makes us responsible for its health. Hello everyone, my name's Michaela and this is Andrea and we are Blank Park Zoo's special events coordinators we wanted to take just a brief minute of your time and say thank you so much for tuning into Hope for the Wild virtually mm -hmm. this year. We are so excited that you could join us and we wanted to talk to you about an opportunity that is happening right now that we do not want you to miss out on. So get ready to browse, bid, and buy. We have a silent auction going on right now. Not only do we have a wide variety of beautiful homemade goods and eco-friendly products, but there are also one-of-a-kind zoo experiences that are up for grabs. We were lucky enough to be able to host Hope for the Wild free to the public this year, which hasn't always been the case. Uh, we are so thrilled to be able to connect with you in this way, um, to share our mission, particularly our mission of conservation, and to raise some really critical funds through this auction. By purchasing items and bidding in the silent auction, you are making a difference in the wild. If you feel so inclined to donate, our webpage makes donations a breeze. And the best part is, a portion of every single dollar goes directly towards Coral Restoration and the nonprofit Blank Park Zoo. To check out the website, um, as well as to see all of the auction items and to donate, you can go to the URL that's on screen now 
Um, it'll be available for the entire time that this program is going, but also beyond it. So be sure to check out the packages. Uh, many of them were created not only by staff of Blaine Park Zoo, but also our beloved volunteers. Check it out. Hi, my name is Amy and I'm a volunteer here at Blank Park Zoo. Taking action to save the wild is important to me because as an avid traveler, there's nothing more majestic than seeing wildlife in its natural habitat. One way that I take action is to use Coral Safe sunscreen. Join me and take action and bring hope to the wild. One small change can have a big impact and it all starts with you. Hi, I'm Laura and I'm a volunteer here at the zoo. Taking action to save the wild is important. We need to save and restore the ecosystems we have damaged and destroyed. A few ways I'm taking action is by recycling as much as possible, reusing plastic, participating in the Monarch Butterfly Program, planting flowers that are bee and butterfly friendly. Join me and take action to bring hope to the wild. One small change can make a big impact and it all starts with you. So one of the things with this project is taking care of these corals, and that is a huge priority for us. We want to make sure that these corals are healthy and happy and ready to go back to the ocean as soon as possible. So there are several things that we do throughout the day to make sure that our corals are doing well. One of the first things we do every morning is first we make sure that we disinfect ourselves. We make sure that we wash our hands with soap and water and then we also use isopropyl alcohol to disinfect our hands. This makes sure that we're not bringing any other uh, bacteria, fungal, viral um, things into these systems that are very sensitive. The next thing that we do is we make sure that we check the temperature and salinity every single day. That means we're matching those temperatures that they would normally see in Florida and also the saltiness or the salinity of the water in the ocean. That's usually about 32 to 38 parts per thousand. We also make sure the water is clean. So we, um, about twice, twice a month, sometimes every other or every week, we actually will test things like ammonia, nitrate, nitrite, the pH, which is very important. Also alkalinity and calcium, which helps build that, that strong skeleton corals use to grow. Another thing that is really important to the health of these corals is checking in on our life support systems. This is what makes the tank safe for the corals to live in. We have certain things like protein skimmers that collect the protein um, out of the water. We have things like filter socks, which actually will pull out whole pieces or particulates of waste, such as algae and other things like that. We also have uh, phosphate removers that help reduce the amount of phosphates in our water, which can also encourage algae growth. We really don't want the algae to outcompete the corals, so we also will take fine comb toothbrushes and scrub pads, and we will actually physically clean the corals to make sure there are no there is no algae um, hitchhiking on the coral skeleton. Another huge part of our duties is feeding the corals. As we mentioned before, these corals can be very very hungry, so we feed them about two to three times a week. They get a very mixed diet, which you'll hear more about when you get to meet some of our corals. Uh, we regularly check the animal welfare of all of our corals. We make sure that their, their color looks good, that their polyps are extending properly, and that they're feeding really well. If, none of, if some of these parameters are not quite where we like to see them, we will actually work with our vet staff closely and do several different types of treatments. These can be baths, uh, where we'll actually pull the corals from their systems, set up an independent uh, tank for them, and actually treat them with medication just for that one coral. We can also ap apply pastes that are really helpful for um, treating some of those edges that might be getting algae growth on them or might have some tissue loss on those areas. We also regularly get in cleaner inverts. Cleaner inverts can be peppermint shrimp, uh, astrea snails, and sea urchins. These are really helpful for us when we don't have time to clean every little nook and cranny of algae. These animals will help us clean up that algae as well. One of the really important parts of this project is maintaining biosecurity. That means we don't want to cross contaminate any of our um, other holding tanks or any of our other exhibits with these coral trays. It's very important that we only work with these trays when we haven't been dealing with other water sources. One of the ways that we help 
kind of eliminate that cross-contamination is by disinfecting all of our equipment. We make sure that we disinfect all of our equipment used for cleaning the exhibits, cleaning the coral trays. We make sure that we disinfect anything that we use for our treatments of the corals. So that includes extra tanks and things like that. It's really, really important that we keep these corals healthy so that one day they can go back to the ocean and continue to thrive. Hello, my name is Ann Schmerdla and I'm the President and CEO at the Blank Park Zoo. Be sure to check out some of the fun and unique auction items on BidPal. One of my favorite items for bid is this incredibly beautiful blanket made by our talented volunteer, Cindy Grease. The wool she hand dyed using plants and she hand wove the entire blanket by herself. Thank you for your support. Your purchase brings hope to corals in the wild. Hello, my name is Amanda Newsom and I am the Vice President and Chief Development Officer at Blank Park Zoo. Be sure to check out some of the fun and unique auction items on BidPal. One of my favorite items on BidPal for sale is this awesome t-shirt that was created through our partnership with Raygun. Thank you for your support. Your purchase brings hope to corals in the wild. Hi, my name is Kelsey and I'm a carnivore pin and pet keeper here at Blank Park Zoo. My mom and I made these fleece blankets and they're great for cuddling loved ones on the couch, taking them to a sports game, or even on a picnic. Thank you for your support and your purchases of our baskets will help go to save the corals in the wild. Hi, I'm Tanya Ramsire. I'm the Coral Rescue Project Coordinator for the Coral Rescue Project under FWC. I live in Marathon, Florida in the Florida Keys. Before this position, I studied SCTLD or stony coral tissue loss disease in a histology lab in Virginia. I conducted my master's research in St. Thomas U.S. Virgin Islands on coral reef ecology. And before that, I worked as an aquarist at the Smithsonian Marine Ecosystems Exhibit in Fort Pierce, Florida. I've been with this project for about two years. It'll be two years exactly in April. And some of my personal goals for this project include just seeing it all come to fruition, seeing the corals outplanted, and eventually seeing the Florida coral reefs restored. What initially drew me to this project and why it's important to me is because SCTLD was and still is such a huge issue. We still don't know exactly what this disease is and research takes time and it takes funding. The rescue project wanted to act immediately and provide a quick solution, which was removing corals from the disease zone and holding them somewhere safe while we try to figure out what this disease is. And I really wanted to be a part of this fast paced and action packed project. This is just an amazing project to be working on and I love every minute of it. I'm really lucky to be able to see the project from so many different angles, which includes diving, collecting the corals, mounting them, measuring them, shipping them and helping to coordinate what happens with the coral offspring and their parents next. And I also handle a lot of the data from our holders once they arrive to their new homes. One thing I would say to people in Iowa about this project is just learn, read, ask questions, get involved with anything pertaining to coral reefs. Once travel is easier, go visit the reefs, go snorkeling, go diving, and fall, fall in love with them just as I did. If you can do anything about your environmental practices, um, just do anything and everything you can to help the environment. Every little bit counts, even if you think it doesn't. Thank you. Hi, my name is Keith, and I'm a Blank Park Zoo volunteer. Taking action to save the wild is important to me because I really enjoy nature, and I want future generations to enjoy it as well. One way that I take action is by using reusable bags when grocery shopping. So join me and take action to bring hope to the wild. One small change can make a big difference, and it all starts with you. Hi, my name is Carla and I volunteer at Blank Park Zoo. On a snorkeling excursion, we are instructed to stay on the surface of the water to avoid harming the coral reefs. Looking down, I witnessed how much damage had already occurred and I realized we need to take action to protect them. Join me to bring hope to the wild. One small change can have a big impact and it all starts with you. Hello, my name is Cassidy. I am the Guest Experiences Manager here at the Blank Park Zoo. Taking action to save wildlife is important to me because if we didn't have wildlife, we couldn't have a zoo. One way I take action is to use my reusable coffee cup every morning for my coffee. Join me and take action to bring hope to the wild. One small change can make the biggest difference. 
Hi, my name is Laura Kelly and I'm an aquatic zookeeper here at Blank Park Zoo. Today I want to talk to you guys about some corals that we have at our facility. To start, I want to mention a coral called Montastria cavernosa. The common name is a great star coral. So the coral that I'm talking about is this one right here. It's this pinkish orange right in the middle. This coral is originally from the Caribbean and you can find these corals any depth between three to 100 feet deep. These guys form massive boulders and domes that can grow over to five feet in diameter. So they're pretty big. They have pimple-like polyps that will open up and extend long tentacles in the wild that can capture food in the water column. Um, here we actually feed these guys a mixture of a phytoplankton and coral tissue supplements. This great, great star coral's bulky structure greatly contributes to the formation of the coral reef and actually helps protect the Florida coast against hurricanes and tropical storms. It does this by slowing down intensive wave actions that come with those storms. All right, the second coral I'm gonna to talk to you about is Pseudodichloria strigosa. It's a very long scientific name, um, but it is actually in commonly named symmetrical brain coral. So I really wanted to talk to you guys about some brain coral um, because they look like brains and I just think they're pretty neat. So the one I wanted to show you guys is this one right here in the tank. It has actually a little snail right there with it. So these corals are actually known and named for their symmetry of all those little grooves that you see on the top there, kind of looking like a brain. So the unique thing about these valleys on the top of the coral is usually they meet in a center or close to the center. In this one, it actually meets right over on the edge here, but all of these guys tend to line up to meet right in the middle. Within each valley are actually little cup-like depressions called coralites, and those guys hold little tiny polyps. So polyps actually have little stinging cells and tentacles, and at night they actually expand and grab things out of the water column for food. Here we actually feed them with turkey basters and we feed directly at the polyps within the grooves. Um, their food includes frozen zooplankton, small crustaceans like brine shrimp, um, a thing we use called reef roids, that is a blend of naturally occurring marine plankton and also coral tissue supplements. These guys grow into large boulders in the wild sometimes reaching close to six feet in diameter. These guys actually grow very, very slowly. Um, they actually grow a speed of a few millimeters in one year. So it can take up to like one century or centuries to grow into very large colonies. And lastly, I wanna mention an algae that's in the polyps. It's called zooxanthellae. So zooxanthellae is what gives a coral its pigment or coloration. And zooxanthellae is actually photosynthetic. So just like plants, um, they absorb things from light and the coral really benefits from the products of photosynthesis within the belly. All right, another coral that I want to talk to you guys about is a coral called Musa angulosa. It is also called a large flower coral. And I'm gonna point this one out here, right here. It looks just like flowers to me at least. It name comes from those bumpy ridges that are on the outside. And those guys are actually each individual polyps. They're very, very large polyps and they can grow in groups or single polyps on their own. They can actually grow up to five inches in length and about an inch and a half to two inches in diameter. So these polyps can vary in color from grays to browns and even greens, pinks, and purples. The one that you are looking at has a little bit of pink in the middle there as well as some purples, greens, all of the colors. During the day, the polyps have like a fleshy appearance, but at night they expand and they use small tentacles that are on the outside ridges of each polyp to capture food. Because the polyps are so large, they're actually able to eat almost anything it traps in the sticky tentacles. That includes small fish and invertebrates. So at Blank Park Zoo, we feed these guys pretty heavily. Um, we've observed that they can consume quite a bit of food in one sitting. Uh, we generally feed them ground plankton, reef tissue supplements, and they can also take in chopped clams and even small crustaceans. Now in the wild, this coral is actually quite aggressive towards other corals. It can overgrow and shade other corals around it, and it even uses its strong stinging cells to push them back. 
the stinging cells of the angulosa is actually the strongest ones in all the corals. Um, so no corals have the strength of the stinging cells to fight back. Hi, my name is Marissa Foster. I am a saltwater aquarist at the National Mississippi River Museum and Aquarium. We are an AZA accredited facility and when U.S. Fish and Wildlife reached out to AZA to ask for our help, we answered that call. We received our shipment of corals on April 2nd, 2019, and we have been helping to protect them from stony coral tissue loss disease for almost two years now. Here at the National Mississippi River Museum and Aquarium, we explore the different connections that the river holds. That includes the connection to the Gulf of Mexico, so all the way down to the sea. And that's where these corals happen to be found. This project really spoke to us because these corals are declining at an unprecedented rate. Once they get the disease, there's a 90% chance of mortality. And it has been spreading very, very quickly. From first being discovered in 2014 off the coast of Florida, it has traveled down to Mexico, Belize, and even Jamaica. Me in particular, I really have found a passion for corals because they are a huge part of the ocean environment. They make up a quarter of all the ocean inhabitants' homes. And without them, it could cause terrible damage to our ocean's health and to animals' habitats. My personal goal for this project is to keep the corals that we have in our care healthy. We want them to grow and we want them to flourish so that way when they get put back into the ocean, they're truly going to thrive and help rebuild the Florida Reef Trek. Even though we live in Iowa and we are very far away from the ocean, we can still make a difference. Even just by reducing the use of single-use plastics, recycling as much as we can, and reusing the plastics that we already have, you're making an impact on the environment. By looking up sustainably sourced seafoods, you're helping the ocean's habitats be protected. And rivers are on both of our borders. So any chemicals or pollution that we have that gets thrown into the river, it's gonna inevitably end up in the ocean. And that causes stress to those animals. It causes stress, which then reduces their immune response, which then makes them more susceptible to disease. Yes, we live in Iowa, but we can make a difference. Hello, my name is Shannon McKinney and I'm the Chief Animal Care Officer here at Blank Park Zoo. Be sure to check out some of the fun and unique auction items on BidPal. One of my favorite items that's up for bid is these great insulated Preppy Pelican drink containers. There's a variety of different options. We've got this nice big tall one for your big water bottles or maybe your bottles of wine. This smaller one for smaller water bottles or maybe a cool beverage in the summertime even comes with this great silicone straw so that you can be sustainable in your drinking. And this really cute little pouch that you can use for money, coins, heck, even your favorite snack. It's really up to you. They're durable and I absolutely love the cute turtle pattern. Thank you so much for your support. Your purchase brings hope to the corals in the wild. Hello, my name is Rachel Summers. I'm the Chief Operations and People Officer here at Blank Park Zoo. Be sure to check out some of our fun packages on our BidPal page. A couple of my favorite items are this handmade blanket and bracelet along with matching earrings with really cute turtles on them. Made and donated by one of our favorite volunteers, Nancy Engel. Thank you, Nancy, for making these and donating for this worthy cause. And thank you for your support. Your purchase brings hope to the wild. Thank you for joining us for Hope for the Wild Corals. Understanding the world around us and finding ways to work together is the first step to save animals and habitats in the wild. Water connects us, and each of us play a role in the health of our oceans. Even if you're in a landlocked state like Iowa, you have an impact on corals in the ocean. 
In order to keep the ecosystem safe and clean for generations to come, we need to take action now. Every small act makes a big impact on the natural world around us. I would like to take this opportunity to thank our partners in conservation, the Mississippi River Museum and Aquarium, the Florida Reef Track Rescue Project, and AZA. It takes all of us working together to make a difference. Don't forget to check out our BidPal page. Auction items are available until March 8th. Join us in July for our next episode, Hope for the Wild Giraffe. This program will feature the work being done by Blank Park Zoo and the Giraffe Conservation Foundation to save giraffe in the wild. Information will be available on our website in June. Thank you.